All right, Adam Stern here at KCRS 23. I'm here with Dr. David Braun from Yale. Uh, and he is a specialist in immunotherapy and, and has just uh, moderated a panel on advances in immunotherapy. Dr. Braun, thank you so much for talking. No, it's my pleasure. It's such an honor to be here and to see the amazing advances that are happening. It's a so tell, tell us about some of those. Absolutely. And so I think where I come from is the, the idea that immune-based therapy, harnessing the immune system to actually attack kidney cancer, it's different than other types of therapy. Other types of therapy really aim to attack the cancer cells themselves. And those have really provided meaningful benefits for patients, helping patients still live longer, those with advanced disease, and helping to improve quality of life as well. And those are really meaningful things to do. But I think a lot of patients really, their, their ultimate hope, their dream is to not just uh, improve the quantity and quality of life, but they get to the point of cure because mm -hmm. they want to really eradicate diseases. And as much as targeted therapy has played such an important role, I think immunotherapy is the one, not just in kidney cancer, but including kidney cancer, mm -hmm. where it has the potential to provide something that's really long lasting, maybe even that word cure. Mm -hmm. The problem is it's a small number now. Right. It's a sort of the proof of concept phase. Mm -hmm. But what we need to do is really get to the next level of immunotherapy where it's not a proof of concept anymore. It's, it's the norm where people mm -hmm. are really to durable responses, long term responses and cures. And I think through optimizing kind of the medicines we have now, the mm -hmm. immune therapies we have now, by being critically thinking about what are going to be the next generations of immune therapy and how can we sort of rationally design both in the yeah. lab and the clinic, that's going to be important. In, your, in one of the talks that you uh, were giving, you used an analogy about a car. Yeah, I absolutely. like that analogy. Would you mind sharing that with uh, the patients? <laughs> absolutely. And part of this comes from you know, immune therapies so complicated and that's that's for people on the outside that's for people in immunology it's, and you know everything that you think you study does five different things and so i like a framework that kind of simplifies it mm -hmm. and the idea is really the immune system is a car that's driving towards and ultimately eliminating tumor mm -hmm. and so what are the tools you have to make that car do it mm -hmm. well you have taking your foot off the brakes releasing the brakes that's really where the backbone of our medicines are things that inhibit the pd1 pathway are really lifting those brakes mm -hmm. and those have been really effective the second is pressing on the gas pedal if you look historically, 25, 30 years ago, that actually had some good effects. High dose IL-2, mm -hmm. while you know, not commonly used now, there were for some small number of patients really long-term meaningful benefits, even cures. Mm -hmm. And we're in, a, in an era now where there's new versions, new, uh, really, really clever versions of these cytokines that might be able to help. But pressing on the gas or lifting the brake without any direction is also troublesome. That's what a lot of new therapies rely on. The last part is that steering wheel. Go ahead. Yeah. And so that's where how can we how can we steer the immune system? And the idea is medicines, whether that's cell therapies like CAR T cells mm -hmm. or more vaccine based approaches, probably not enough by themselves, mm -hmm. but together with those other levers we can pull on, can really steer the immune system yeah. and powerful way to eliminate tumor cells. Yeah. Now I know mRNA vaccines ha have transformed a lot of yeah. medicine just in, over the course of the pandemic, became almost like a household term. And I know that uh, in prior conversations, you and I have talked about peptides and that, yeah. that not all proteins are, are have to be mRNA. Um, Absolutely. So talk to me about the vaccine mm -hmm. landscape just for a moment. No, I think it's a really good question. And I, in my mind, I break it up into two parts. One is you have to have a target. You have to have something to steer towards. And I think that's the most challenging thing. What is it that's unique to a kidney cancer cell that could steer the immune system towards that's not going to attack other parts mm -hmm. of the body? That's what I think the fundamental challenge is. If you can successfully do that, I think there's multiple what I would call delivery modes, mm -hmm. whether that's mRNA, I think that's really taken off in terms of its effective manufacturing, classic peptide-based approaches, those have a 20 plus year history mm -hmm. of safety and, and efficacy, and there's other more clever ways, viral-based mm -hmm. approaches. But I almost think that is a little bit less important. There's many ways that once you have the target you know you can go for, and there's multiple good ways that you can steer the immune system, mm -hmm. it's finding that initial target that's going to be the finish off. And you know, on that topic, one of the things that I found most sort of hopeful and exciting uh, was when you mentioned that that you were able to get uh, immunogenicity across the board in one of your trials. That's absolutely right. So. We had looked at creating a personalized cancer vaccine targeting mutations. So for each person, we know what their specific mutations are that are only in the tumor and not in normal parts of the body and use a vaccine, in that case, a peptide-based vaccine, but could easily be mRNA to steer the immune system. And the big question is there aren't a lot of mutations in kidney cancer. Mm -hmm. Can you do this at all? And the answer was, was yes for all my patients. And then did it actually do its job of stimulating the immune system? The answer to that was yes as well. For mm -hmm. all patients, we saw that the immune system was able to rev up. And so now the, the big question is, this is the proof of concept that we can really do it. 
Now we have to say, okay, does this actually work to do things like prevent cancers from coming back after, mm -hmm. after surgery, or ultimately can be used in treatment for more advanced mm -hmm. cancers as well. Thank you so much, Dr. David. My Braun. pleasure. Always a pleasure.